Hi everyone, this is Angie coming at you live from Santa Rosa, California today. Um, my business is called The Painted Feather by Angie. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and I am happy to be here live on the Chalk Paint 101 page today. And as you jump on there, tell me where you are watching from. And um, hi, Katie. How are you? Long time no talk. I haven't seen you this week, Katie. Um, anyway, uh, welcome to the Chalk Paint 101 page. I'm happy to have you on here. And today I thought I would just take it back to basics. I've had a lot of questions this week and I've had a lot of people sending me pictures this week about problems that they're having with their paint projects. A lot of these problems could be worked out if you just, um, if you just do the basics, if you just do things in the right order, hi B, and follow, um, follow the right process to get a good outcome with chalk paint. And um, actually when I, when I put a box together for somebody, I've been doing a lot of porch deliveries. And um, when I put something together for somebody, I always give a little sheet that has instructions on what to do step by step. Katie, you're super busy. Um, yeah, I've been super busy too, working on some really, really fun projects this week. Um, anyway, if, if you order things for me, you're gonna get step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. So today I just wanna to talk to you about what to do and why you would use like slick stick versus um, boss and you know, just how to get really good results. And you can do that just by going over the basics and cleaning your product and um, doing your repairs correctly. And I'm not gonna show repairs today, but um, we will clean this piece. Um, what we're going to work on today is I got this. Actually, Katie, you were with me when I got this. Um, I got this sign at a thrift shop, and I paid $5 for it. And I'm going to make a really fun sign out of this. And um, you don't have to spend a lot of money to do these projects. Actually, it's really good to reuse and recycle things, upcycle. So... Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you step by step how I'm going to get a good result and make a really, really cool sign out of this. And um, I won't be putting a transfer on it today because I don't think we'll have enough time, but this is a transfer that I am going to use. It says, welcome to our farmhouse. You can probably see it a little bit better right there. And um, I will pull it out actually and just show you how it's going to look. And if you've never used transfers before, um, there's lots of tutorials on how to do this. A lot of Dixie Bell retailers, oh, I didn't, I didn't tell you guys, I'm a Dixie Bell premier retailer in Santa Rosa, California. And you can find my products at Whistle Stop Antiques and we are open again. So Whistle Stop has been there since 1974. So they're not going anywhere and um, continuously voted best antique shop in the area. So if you're in our neck of the woods, come see us at Whistle Stop Antiques. So, okay, I'm gonna show you what I will eventually put on here and maybe the next time I'm on this page, we'll finish this project because I just signed up to do some more lives on here. That was a fun shopping trip. Actually, that store is closing though, Katie. So it's, we're not gonna be able to go back there, unfortunately. Um, okay, so let me show you how cool this is going to look. I already measured it out, and it looks like it was kind of made for the sign. So, it's a little windy. I'm going to try to get it to not blow away here. I'll show you. I'll put it down, and then I'll show you what it's going to be like. Welcome to our farmhouse. Okay, here we go. So... Can you see that? Actually, maybe I'll hold this up. So this is gonna look really, really good on here when I put it down. So isn't that awesome? So anyway, that's where we're headed with this and we will get there, but let's talk about how to get there in the best possible way and make it so that we don't have to fix problems along the way. So 
I'm going to roll this back up and put it back because it will blow away if I don't. This is a transfer by Redesign with Prima, and I am a retailer of Redesign with Prima, and a lot of Dixie Bell um, retailers are. So you can find these products by contacting somebody. And to find a retailer of Dixie Bell products, you can go to Dixie Bell's um, website, www.dixiebellpaint.com, and you can search for a retailer in your area. Or you can click on that link that I put in this description. I made it super easy for you, so um, very user-friendly. Anyway, so let's, let's get going on this. And I see a bunch of people on here. Tell me where you are watching from. I would love to know. And if you're on the East Coast, you're a little after four o'clock right now. I am on the West Coast in California, so I'm a little after one o'clock p.m. I'm located about an hour north of San Francisco. And um, anyway, it's a nice day here. So, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Okay, when I put a box together, I always tell people, here are the step-by-step -step instructions. First things first, clean your piece with white lightning cleaner. What is that? It is, it comes in this container here. Uh, it's a little bright. I'm just gonna be reversed because I have my camera flipped. So white lightning cleaner comes in a granular formula. I've been using this same container for quite a while and it just, it's two tablespoons per gallon of water, but you just put a couple teaspoons in. If you're gonna use like a container like this, I've reused my Myers Clean Day bottle. So um, just put it in here and we're gonna clean off the sign. I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna show you how much dirt comes off of this sign that I bought. So, so anyway, just get warm water, put it in your bottle, spraying this off, and just clean it up. So this will get all the dirt off of it. If there's any oil on here, it's gonna get the oil off of it. If there's, um, if there's just anything that shouldn't be on the surface that would prevent you from getting good adhesion to the surface with your paint, it will get it off of there. So if you're doing kitchen cabinets, you're gonna to wanna to do this probably two or three times. So make sure you get it really nice and clean. Okay, so here we go. And actually, look, I have gloves here. I was gonna put on, you should put gloves on when you're using this product. I forgot, but by good practice, it's not great for your skin. So put some gloves on. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so I've wiped this off. You see how dirty that is? So even if something doesn't look dirty, it's probably really dirty. So clean it off. And then after that, then you have to get the residue from the white lightning cleaner off because you don't wanna have anything in between what you're painting and the paint. And that's gonna leave a residue. So I'll move that over here. Got my little shop cloths, my lint-free shop cloths here. And I'm just gonna take my misting spray bottle. This just has water in it. And I'm just gonna put my water on this sign. And now I'm just gonna get off anything that could be left over from cleaning my sign. So pretty easy. You'd be amazed at how many people don't do this though. So if you're one of those people that doesn't clean before you start painting and then you're having problems and sending me pictures like why is this not um, coming out so great? It's because there's probably oils or dirt or something on the surface that is not allowing the paint to adhere. So just do yourself a favor, get some white lightning cleaner and clean whatever you're painting, okay? And you can use this on pretty much anything that you're going to paint. So um, just don't let it pool up and sit on there. Just wipe it right off, okay? So we've done that. Now, um, this, this sign is made out of wood, so I don't need to worry about um, using a problem solver on this. And there are a couple problem solvers in the Dixie Bell line. So what I'm talking about is Boss, 
okay? And this blocks odors, stops um, bleed through and stains. And so if I had something, actually I'll give you an example of something that I would use Boss on. I'm not gonna have to worry about using it on this, but I am going to be painting a dresser really soon here. This is a great dresser, but look at this. This looks like a bleeder to me. So if I was going to be painting this, which I'm going to be painting this, you can see it has lots of dirt and oils and different things on it, probably has a varnish on it. Hi, Amy, how are you? Um, welcome. Um, anyway, so if I was gonna be painting this today, I would definitely clean it, I would lightly scuff sand it, and then I would be putting boss on it because that looks like a bleeder to me and you get pretty good at knowing what's gonna bleed. So I don't want it to bleed through. So if I'm going to use Boss, I'm going to apply this with a brush. Um, there's different things you're gonna apply it for or with, but I usually use a chip brush. So get your chip brush, apply it, and then you have to wait for it to dry, wait a couple hours for it to dry, put another coat of Boss on. Sometimes it dries faster than that and then wait 24 hours. Some people say you can wait less time, but sometimes you'll get bleed through because you didn't wait and you didn't let Boss do its thing. So um, if I'm gonna use a primer or like, um, if I'm gonna use Slick Stick, I do it and then I wait 24 hours. Just let it set up, let it do its thing, and then paint the next day, okay? I know we all get in a rush and we wanna hurry, but um, I've made the mistake of putting boss on and then waiting for it to dry like you know as soon as soon as you touch it and it's dry and then I paint and then I'm getting bleed through and it's like why the heck didn't I just wait a little while so um, and it, it says right on the container here that if you start getting bleed through then you might need to wait longer so just do yourself a favor give it 24 hours and wait before you start painting okay so if I'm painting something that um, is really slick, and so this, this right here, this sign isn't super slick, but um, if I was painting something like this right here, which I also got at the thrift shop, which was really nice, um, if I was gonna paint this, which I'm not because it's pretty, but I would go ahead and put slick stick all over this because this is not something that I can sand. Um, this is very very shiny it's very slick and this probably would have a problem with the paint adhering to it so if i was going to paint this pretty thing which i'm not but if i was i would use slick stick okay so slick stick says right on here bonds to glossy and other hard shiny surfaces to allow for effective painting and with slick stick what you're going to do is you don't have to sand something. A lot of times you're painting something that's like a plastic or a glass, and you can't really sand that. So you're gonna take and you're gonna clean it off with white lightning cleaner. You're gonna spray it off with a misting water bottle, wipe down all the residue from the white lightning cleaner, and then you're gonna apply two coats of this. So you apply one coat, let it dry, let it set up on there. That first coat's gonna hold on to whatever you're painting and then you're gonna do a second coat, and that second coat will be the layer that grabs onto your paint. So um, glass or PVC or metal, let's see, it has lots of things, Formica countertops, if you wanna paint Formica. Um, I've seen a lot of people painting their tile in their bathrooms or on their kitchen countertops. This is what you wanna use for that, slick stick. So, and it will look really, really good and it will give it something to grab onto. Um, and actually I had somebody ask me last week if there's a reason to use Slick Stick and Boss. And not really, because if you're gonna use Boss, you're gonna probably be able to um, sand, at least scuff sand something. So it might be a wood product, or, but it's not gonna be like a plastic or a piece of glass. So usually you don't need both, you usually need one or the other. So um, yeah, if you, if you guys have any questions too, you can send me questions. 
happy to answer them for you. So, okay, so I don't need to use either one of those products on my sign here because um, the surface of it doesn't, it's not super slick, but what I'm going to do and what I usually do with everything that I paint unless, um, I don't know, I, I usually at least scuff sand what I'm painting. And what I'm gonna use to scuff sand my sign with is I have these rad pads and they come in different grits. This one is fine grit and I cut it in half already. They come quite a bit bigger than this. So rad pads and most Dixie Bell retailers carry those as well. So you can find those on the Dixie Bell um, website too. So rad pads, they come, this is the fine. The medium will remove things. So if you need to get down a little bit further, then you can use a medium. I just wanna scuff sand this um, sign just to give the paint a little more to grab onto. So here's how you scuff sand, okay? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring you in a little closer because a lot of you might not be sanding anything ever. So here we go. This is all we're gonna do. Just back and forth. So you get the edges and I don't know if you can see but it's just making a little you can see a little bit of um, scuffing on the surface here so that's all we're gonna do and that will just give the paint something to bite on to okay so you can see my and see on here that I'm getting some of this yellow paint that's existing onto my sponge. So, this is how easy and quick it is. Not hard to do. Don't be afraid to sand something. All right, that's about it. Okay, so scuff sanding, not hard to do, you can do it. And the only time that you wanna do more than that is if you're gonna um, stain like the top of something or if you are um, sanding out imperfections on something and you need to even it out then you're gonna to wanna to sand a little bit more aggressively than that. But for something like this, that's just a quick little project, that's all you need to do. Some people don't even do that. And most of the time it works out just fine. But for myself, I just want the paint to have something to grab onto. So now, since I just got it all dusty again, I'm just gonna spritz it off since I've already cleaned it. I'm just gonna wipe it off. Or you can get like a tack cloth and wipe it off with a tack cloth just to get all the dust off, but I'm just gonna wipe it off. So, and with this, like if this was plastic or Formica, then I would be putting slick stick on it right now. Or if it had a varnish on it or a stain, then I would be putting boss on it. Or if it smelled like cigarettes, then I would be putting two coats of boss on it to block that odor because I don't want to smell something. I don't want to bring something in my house that doesn't smell good. So if you guys are watching, tell me where you're watching from and tell me if you've used Dixie Bell paint before or maybe if you're working on a project this week. So say hello to me. Okay, now I have wiped off all that dust. I mean, look at all that stuff that come off, came off of there. So make sure you wipe it off. Next thing to do, okay, let's see. If I wanted to, yep, that's, I'm just making sure what, on my little thing here, what I'm gonna do next. This is what I give everybody. Um, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna start painting. And the paint products that I'm using today just today, I'm just gonna use cotton. Um, eventually, I will be blending the cotton with manatee gray. So this is cotton. And 
Eventually I'll be using Manatee Gray as well. That's backwards. Hi Deb from Gilbert, Arizona. Welcome. You working on any projects, Deb? Um, so I'm gonna use cotton today. My next go around, I'm gonna blend cotton with the Manatee Gray and I'll start from the center and like the outer edge is going to have the Manatee Gray on it. But for today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paint, always shake your paint up, okay? Bee's working on some big projects. What kind of projects are you working on? So, all right, shake up your paint. You can hear the trash trucks here. I set these live videos up and I forgot that it was trash day, but that's okay. All right, my paintbrush has disappeared on me. I just had it here. Oh, there it is, okay. So, another basics of painting with Dixie Bell paint. Um, a good brush is so important. If you don't have one of these synthetic brushes, these will not shed on you. Um, they feel really, really smooth and they're gonna make the paint go on super smooth. You're not gonna see a whole lot of brush strokes. Although, that being said, these are hand-painted pieces. So if you see a little bit of uh, a brush stroke, whatever, it's, it's a hand-painted unique piece. So, um, all right, get your brush a little bit damp, okay? And this is a misting spray bottle and it's not the same as just a regular spray bottle that you get at the hardware store. This um, you can purchase most of the time from Dixie Bell retailers. Hi, Terry. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. So get your really good paintbrush. And if you don't have a really good paintbrush, it's gonna come out okay anyway. Just get your paintbrush, and then we're gonna dip right into the paint, and don't get too much on there. You don't need a ton of it. The Dixie Bell paint is really, really great for coverage. And if you didn't know, it will cover about twice as much as a latex paint for the same amount. So um, if you think it's expensive, really you can kind of double the size because the coverage is so good. So I'm gonna bring you in here so I can show you how great the coverage is, okay? So bring you closer. Let's get a coat of paint onto our project. Okay, and you can actually, you can spritz your project too. It'll help the paint move. It will help your paint go on smoother. See how quick and easy and how good the coverage is? And I'm painting over black right now. And look how great that looks. So we've properly cleaned. I'm gonna spritz a little more on here, go back into my paint. And the, this paint is so great, it, it does a lot of the work for you. So long, even strokes. Even if you're painting like this all over the place when you're painting, still go back and do long, smooth strokes to smooth it out, okay? Unless there's a certain technique you're doing where you want to have see those back and forth brush strokes. Okay, so we're getting our paint on here. I usually try to go all the way across the piece and all the way back. I don't know if you can see the whole thing here. Let's see. I'm gonna adjust you a little bit. Bring you back a little bit more. So we're gonna get our paint on first coat. And then I'm gonna talk to you about what happens next and what I do as a practice when I'm painting anything. Okay, just gotta set your foundation. You know, you're only gonna be as good as the step that you did prior. So if you're putting this on a dirty surface, it's not gonna adhere and it's not going to stay on. And if you, if you need slick stick and you don't know that you need slick stick, the paint's not gonna adhere and then you can go and you can put it on. So don't stay on the same path if you realize that you've missed a step. You gotta, you gotta start back and maybe back up a step 
and then proceed. But don't stay on the same path once you realize that you might need to go back and either boss or slick stick. And you can put boss right over paint. If you have bleed through, you can go and put your boss on. If you forgot or if you didn't think you would have something bleed, then you can put boss right over whatever it is that you're painting. And I would do two coats and wait 24 hours. I've had to do that on projects before, even when I put boss and I didn't wait long enough. So long strokes. Let me get a coat of paint on this within a few minutes here. Okay, so you can either spray right on your brush or you can spray right on your, whatever you're painting, whatever your project is. And then I'm gonna smooth it out. This paint dries so incredibly fast. So this, I would probably be ready to put another coat on in like 15 minutes. Because it's probably about, I don't know, it's about 80 degrees where I'm at right now. This paint's gonna dry fast. And that's another thing, don't be right out in the sun painting if you can help it because it'll give you less time to make it nice and pretty. There we go. You guys can ask questions if you have any. Just doing the basics of getting a good finish with your Dixie Bell products right now. Okay, so then I'm going to go back over and just a nice smooth finish. And if you see a lot of brush strokes, don't worry. Next time around, you it will, it will smooth out. It's already pretty much dry at the bottom here. Okay, so my brush... I don't want it to dry out, so I'm moving here. It's a little trick for you. I don't want my brush to dry out, so I'm going to spritz it with my water and then my fancy plastic bag here. I'm going to throw it in my plastic bag because I'm going to still be talking to you guys for a few minutes and I don't want my brush to get too dried out. So. All right, so that is taken care of. So here is, I'm gonna to try to carefully lift this up without getting paint all over the self, myself here. Okay, so you can see one coat. You can kind of see through a little bit, but how often do you miss the brush while painting? Continuously, Terry, the whole time I'm painting, just to keep the paint moving. And once you start using it, you'll realize it, um, but, pretty much continuously, you know, as soon as like you dip your brush in and then um, I spritz my brush and I put it on. So kind of, you'll, you'll get to know how to do it. You can even add a little water to your paint if you don't have a misting spray bottle. Um, you can use a regular spray bottle as well, but these misting spray bottles are a super game changer. And once you use one, it's gonna be like, okay, I, I need it. And it will make your finish just look a lot better than it would, paint all over my hands. But anyway, um, okay, so next thing that you wanna do. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my little, my little chart here. If, so I still am gonna add another coat of paint to this. I'm not gonna do it live because um, I need this to dry and we're not gonna be here all day, but um, the next thing that I will do is I'm gonna blend my manatee gray and my cotton paint. So I'm not gonna do that live because we don't have time for that, but I'll show you next time because I'm, I'm going to be back on this page, I think um, not next Thursday, but the following Tuesday after I think, I think July 2nd, something like that. Anyway, I'll show you the progress on this and then we will apply the transfer to it. But um, yeah, so the next thing that we're gonna do, if I wanted to distress this piece after I painted, then I would lightly distress this piece. And you can do that with like a 220 grit sandpaper all the way down to like maybe like a, a 150. If you, you don't wanna get too aggressive with it, um, these sanding sponges are really, really great. You can either use a Dixie Bell or you can use the medium grit 
um, surf prep sanding sponge. This is this is a rad pad that Dixie Bell carries. So these are really, really great. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. Okay. If I am going to put on the next coat, before I put on my next coat, I'm going to get my little sanding sponge. You can get these from Dixie Bell too. And I'm just going to lightly go over and just knock down any little imperfections. If any little hairs from your brush got on there, um, I'm just gonna kind of smooth it out and I'm not really, really like sanding to get it um, down to where I can see either the surface of, you know, what I'm painting coming through. I'm just sanding to knock it down and make it super smooth. And if you're ever with me at a furniture store where people paint furniture, I'm really annoying because I go and I run my hand over the top of all the things that are painted to see how smooth it is. And if it feels rough, then um, for me, I'm, I just think, okay, they didn't do a good job with it because I want the paint surface to feel buttery smooth. And if you take your little sanding sponge and you sand in between coats and then you sand before your top coat, it's gonna feel really, really nice. So it makes a huge difference. And if you paint for clients, and they run their hand over it, you know, when they pick up their piece, um, they're gonna think you did a good job because it feels really, really nice. So it's just a difference between having something that's okay and having something that is next level as far as painting. So just, that's a little tip for you. So, okay, um, next thing, if I wanted to distress this, I would go along and the way that I distress and I have a video on my YouTube channel about distressing if you don't know you can go to that and watch it and I'm sure there's plenty on chalk paint 101 too so check it out but um, I would take my little sanding sponge actually probably maybe the medium grit or the fine grit and I would just go along the edges okay so like that whole edge and I would just kind of outline it so that's a little tip for you on distressing it. And then after that, if you're adding a transfer, you add the transfer before you top coat it. So um, with this transfer that I'm gonna put on, you, I will lightly sand the whole surface of everything, then I will apply my transfer. And when you apply the transfers, um, a good finish for this is a clear coat. So. I will be using the clear coat in satin by Dixie Bell. Um, you can use, there's a flat, there's a flat clear coat, there's a glossy clear coat that comes out super glossy and pretty. Um, the satin is somewhat wipeable, so if you need kind of a wipeable surface, this is really good. Um, or if you want a flat surface or flat sheen, then you can paint it or put on that clear coat in the flat. So lots of options for you for that. And the next thing that you would do after that is, um, if you wanna glaze your piece, you could use a glaze or you could use a wax to go in. You don't have to wax after clear coat, but if you're using like a dark wax, it's really good to use your clear coat first and then go in with the wax because then you can remove it from the areas that you don't want it. So that's another little tip for you on um, using clear coat before you use some of these things like glazes and waxes. And then you could even add um, gilding wax around the edges that would look really good to you know, make certain features pop out or if you have lots of detail on wood that's always a good idea as well. So anyway, um, get back on Chalk Paint 101 when I'm on here and I will show you the progress of this piece. Um, next time, like I said, we're gonna go over putting on the, um, the transfer from Redesign with Prima. And these are super easy. And once you see how easy it is to do, then you'll probably wanna do a transfer because it's really, um, a great and easy way to transform something furniture or to make a sign or lots lots of fun opportunities with that so you can expand the things that you do so anyway um, thank you all for tuning in today um, you can find me at the painted feather by Angie on Facebook you can find me on TikTok at the painted feather 
Um, you can find me at Instagram at the painted underscore feather or subscribe to my YouTube channel at the painted feather by Angie. Um, to buy Dixie Bell products, you can go to dixiebellpaint.com. You can contact a local retailer in your area and you can search on the Dixie Bell page to find a local retailer. Support your local peeps and um, thank you, Amy. Enjoy the rest of your day as well. And if you want, you can just click on that link right in the description of this video to get to the Dixie Bell page, contact a local retailer. I'm happy to answer any questions for you. So feel free to send me messages regarding paint. And um, I have lots of Dixie Bell products in stock too. So contact me if you want me to ship anything out to you. All right, um, have a great rest of your Thursday, everyone and um, go find something to paint and make sure you follow all the right steps so that it comes out awesome. All right, talk to you all soon, thanks.